In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Hello and a warm welcome to all of you dear brothers and sisters, viewers of Marjaya TV. Here we are again with another episode of the program Marjaya Horizon. Stay tuned, watching news reports and meetings all regarding the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Husseini Shirazi. And now let's watch guidance, which it is a short clip of Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Husseini Shirazi's speech. <laughs> This is such a noble narration. Its literal meaning is that the attention that Allah Almighty gives to His servants men, women, Young, old, literate, illiterate, wealthy, poor, single, or married, it makes no difference. This attention given by Allah Almighty is as the amount of intellect He has given them. And the other case of oppression, bad words or deeds or anything like them, if he wants to punish a bad deed, Allah Almighty calculates the amount of punishment or reward based on the intellect of the doer of the bad or good deeds. This means that when two persons among you hold a single ceremony for Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and then you take part in that ceremony exactly the same as each other. However, he considers the amount of intellect of each one, then rewards each of you differently. Then who have been given more intellect by Allah Almighty will be questioned harder. As we all know, and thus Allah subtitles. And its concentration is at the same level as the intellect to subtilize the, someone. A person can compare himself to his brother or her sister and says, I have done more good deeds. If Allah Almighty has bestowed upon you a larger amount of intellect, then he will question you harder. It's possible that Allah Almighty had bestowed upon you more intellect than another person. Then, as He has given you more, He will also question you more. As your rewards are greater than others according to your intellect. And your punishments will also be greater and more excruciating than others. Sometimes a person oppresses for once, but he would be charged on the day of judgment with thousands of oppressions. This is very important and it all rotates back to a person's intellect and understanding. This is what a person understands well. And also Allah Almighty who calculates perfectly the rewards of the good deeds. 
and punishments of the bad ones. Al Tafuf radio station celebrated its fifth anniversary in 2015, hosting representatives of the Grand Jurist and Islamic authorities, political, social, and religious activists, administrators of journals, and media activists at the 14 Infallible Institution Auditorium in the Holy City of Karbala. Sheikh Muhammad Taqi Zakari and Sheikh Jalal Maash, representatives of the Grand Ayatollah Shirazi, along with Sayyid Alad Din Husseini, head of Quran Radio in Iraq and Sayyid Araf Nasrullah, a head of Ayatollah Shirazi's public relations office in Karbala, emphasized on the essential and important role of modern media for promoting and introducing the culture of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Let's watch this report. At Tofuf Radio Station celebrates its fifth anniversary hosting religious scholars, dignitaries, representatives of the grand jurists, media activists and members of cultural institutions. The ceremony was held at the discussion hall of 14 infallible institutions and at the presence of the media professor Muhammad Ali Rabi. The ceremony is started after the recitation of some Quranic verses and then the participants honored the memory of all those who sacrificed their lives in the way of Ahl Bayt peace be upon them in defending Iraq's people and Shia holy sites. The ceremony was commenced by the words of Sheikh Muhammad Taqi Zakari, a representative of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, who said, It is necessary for all Shias and lovers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, to focus and speed up their efforts in publishing and introducing the School of Prophet's household with the means of media outlets. Shias must observe the holy conduct and morals of the Prophet's household and set a good example to the world. The late Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi always insisted on making use of media, namely radio stations at his time, to spread information and the call of Prophet's household to each house. Then, Sheikh Jalal Maash, a representative of the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, went to the stage and stated a few words. He addressed the audience as follows. I extend my sincere congratulations to our leader, Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance. Our respected religious authorities, especially the Grand Jurors Ayatollah Sayyid Sadr Shirazi, and all believers on this day, as today is the auspicious birthday anniversary of Lady Zainab, peace be upon her. It is needless to speak of the great and influential role of the media in catalyzing any movement and revolution. Lady Zainab accomplished the same task when she published the message of Karbala and his brother, Imam Hussein, to all the world. <laughs> Red tape and bureaucracy and their impact on the dignity of citizens is both the title of a conference held by Adam Cultural Institute and a major problem in Iraqi society. In this conference, academic figures, sociologists and officials were among the attendants and exchanged their views on the issue. Now I invite you to watch a report about this conference. Adam Global Center Defending Rights and Freedoms held a discussion conference under the title of Red Tape and Bureaucracy and their Impact on the Dignity of the Citizens. Ahmed Juwait, the director of the center, was heading this conference. A number of academic figures, specialists in the legal and administrative efforts, and a number of researchers in the study centers discussed this issue. Other researchers in the meeting also forwarded their stances on the problem. Today, Adam Global Center has the honor to host law professors, officials and thinkers and enjoys their attitudes on this phenomenon that is red tape and its impacts on people. We all are aware that in many paperwork, the dignity of our people is violated, mostly in unnecessary divisions of governmental offices. And today is the waste of time and energy on the side of the people. Other researchers attending this conference also stress on the significance of this issue establishing a respectful relationship between people and the officials and getting rid of legal barriers were proposed by the participants. Bureaucracy is a big problem nowadays in Iraq. All Iraqis need to go to offices and in one way or another. They are involved in the long process. Some part of the problem goes back to the abundance of laws that slow down the process and in some cases, these laws stand against each other. 
I believe that our officers are drowned in this pointless process and follow a mere routine. A collection of such problems results in the lengthy and tiring paperwork we see today. The solution of this problem is in the hands of executive directors and managers. It demands attention and hard work on the part of these managers to move their employees out of this routine. Of course, a revision into the redundant laws sounds essential too. Bureaucracy and excessive regulation or rigid conformity to formal rules hinders and prevents action or decision-making. This slows down the pace of progress in developing countries, violates the dignity of their civilians, and opens the space for high-level corruptions. Today, red tape reduction has turned into a campaign, and there has been a consensus formed on its replacement. <laughs> On the days of sorrow and grief for the martyrdom of Prophet Muhammad's soul daughter, Lady Fatima Tul Zahra, peace be upon her, the central office of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Husseini Shirazi in the holy city of Qom held memorial ceremonies for three successive days. These ceremonies were held at the presence of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Husseini Shirazi, numbers of scholars, seminary students and groups of lovers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. After several lectures were delivered by preachers, the participants marked the occasion by reciting poems and honouring Lady Zahra's great character. Look ya Zahra Look ya Zahra I condolence our leader, Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance for the tragedy of his mother's martyrdom, Fatima Zahra, who is the scale of truth and falsehood. We consider a must for ourselves to come out and let the world know of this tragedy. All people, scholars, laymen, everybody comes to the streets to mark this day and tell the world who Lady Fatima was, what had happened to her, and what her great position was before the Holy Prophet of Islam as her sole daughter. We want the world to know that Lady Fatima sacrificed her life for her Imam, leader and husband, Imam Ali, peace be upon him. Today, on the martyrdom day of Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her, we all have gathered here to express our condolence to our Savior, Imam Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, and the Grand Jury Sayyidullah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, and all believers and lovers of Abu Bayt, peace be upon them. On this day, the office of the Grand Jurist and all believers held a procession, heading for the holy shrines of Imam Hussein and his beloved brother, Hadrat Abbas, peace be upon them. Lady Fatima the Zahra, peace be upon her, is the symbol of a revolution against oppression and tyranny. She taught the war of Islam and all those who have taken the Shahada to stand firm in the face of oppressors. Today we see the oppression increasing in the Muslim countries because of ISIS, who preach blasphemy and bloodshed everywhere they go. So this is a must to all Muslims taking the path of Prophet's household to stand against all oppressors with courage and determination. <laughs> Before you were born, my loving daughter, I was shown this by your grandfather. He told me what was to be for my son, and how it would be a tragedy. My brother told me of this day as well I knew what was to become of me But even then I could not stand witness When I saw Shemir walking to him my mother, you cannot bear to see What they did to his broken body 
arrow in his heart never ripped apart Zainab said do not lick your heart My father may came to Karbala Zainab said do not lick your heart With the scope of violence reaching out Islamic countries, numbers of Shia killed, injured, arrested or kidnapped are mounting. In February 2015, Shia Muslims suffer governmental injustice, arrests, discrimination and terrorist attacks in different countries such as Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and in some other Islamic countries. Shia Rights Watch, a human rights organization established for defending. Shia Rights Watch reports. Rights Watch, a human rights organization for protecting rights and freedoms of the Shia Muslims all around the world, offers its monthly report of the Shia's rights violated and suppressed by terrorists and monarchies. This organization highlights this issue that it does not include many incidents in this report due to the lack of documented information. Afghanistan an official has stated that a group of armed men has abducted 30 Shia men from the southern part of this country. No group has yet claimed the responsibility of this action. The Zabal's governor, Mohammed Ashraf, has confirmed that these 30 men were riding on one of the country's main roads in two separate vehicles before the armed men abducted them. Hazara are the Shias in Afghanistan, shaping up 9% of the country's overall population. Pakistan Officials have confirmed an attack on a Shia mosque in the southern part of the country, where 40 people have been martyred. This has been the deadliest attack in the country on Shia Muslims in the past two years. Also, in other terrorist attacks that took place in the city of Shikarpur, many people were killed and injured. An official in the local hospital has said that 20 people were killed due to the terrorist attack. 19 Shia Muslims were martyred and 60 others were injured in a terrorist attack that targeted Shia Muslims in the city of Peshawar. The terrorist attack was carried out while Friday congregational prayer was being performed in the city. Grenades were thrown at the congregators. The terrorist group of Taliban have claimed the responsibility for this attack. A suicide bomber blew himself up at the entrance of the door of a religious institution. This religious institution is called Husayniya Sukaina and it is located in the Rual Bandi city, a close city to the country's capital. A terrorist attempted to go inside the religious institution where the congregation prayer was being held, but the security guard stopped the man at the entrance where he blew himself up causing three Shia Muslims to be killed and four others to be injured. Bahrain Bahrain Accords sentenced six Shia citizens from Qatariya district, 15 others from Ali district, and some other Shia citizens from Malikia district to three, ten, and three years of prison respectively. Besides, the country's Supreme Court has verified the life sentence for five Shia citizens and sentenced another eight Shia citizens from Kurzgan to five years in prison. It is also noteworthy that all the accused are political dissidents, human rights activists, and prominent thinkers who had attended peaceful protests demanding political reform and social justice. The Barony Court has also announced death sentence for three Shia citizens and life imprisonment for seven others, accusing them of taking part in the bombing that killed three Barony police officers and one UAE citizen. These Shias were arrested for attending peaceful protests demanding political reforms. Human rights organization also confirmed that the authorities have jailed two 12-year-old children charged with mob. Although officials had announced they would release the children, the persecutors renewed the jail term for seven more days. The country's judiciary system also revoked the citizenship of 72 well-known Shia activists and protesters, accusing them of acting against the security and the interests of the kingdom. Barney security forces closed in on the peaceful Shia protesters in different cities of the country. In these crackdowns, several protesters were injured severely, among them was a child who was shot in the face. The security forces also stormed a Shia neighborhood and arrested Jalila Said Amin in the city of Sahla and Maryam Sehwan in the city of Sanabis. Sehwan was arrested a month ago and there are real fears of her being tortured at the headquarters of criminal investigations. The regime set fire on a Hosseinia in Adari district. After wide protests from different cities, the security forces threw tear gas inside a Hosseinia and burned the praying site of the Shias. This is why officials had announced electrical fire as the reason for the fire. Masked military men belonging to the kingdom arrested several Shia citizens on charges of insulting the king. The men raided these Shias in their homes and arrested them instantly. Militiamen linked to the regime carried out a night raid to the house of Sheikh Ali Salman. The aggressors were driving in four cars, sources said. Regime special forces with the sniffer dogs carried out an attack to a prison called Joe, injuring many Shia inmates. Syria 
Shia pilgrims from Lebanon were the target of a terrorist attack in Kalasa neighborhood in the Syria's capital. The attack was carried on these Shia pilgrims while riding their bus and it left seven killed and 13 wounded. Rocky propelled grenade fell within Jami High District. No casualties were reported, only financial losses were recorded. On another account, the Jude District, a predominantly Shia district, was under the terrorist attacks. Terrorist attacks were carried through rockets and targeted Shia houses. A car bomb attack was carried in one of Damascus suburbs close to the Said Zainab district. Few casualties were the result of this attack. A bombshell fell on Hamidania's neighborhood near the place called Burjat al Rus. In this terrorist attack, many Shia Muslims' lives were lost and some others were injured. A car bomb attack was also carried in the Kefriya district in Adlib's province. Shia Muslims constitute the majority of the population of this district. Saudi Arabia the Sunni religious scholar Muhammad Barakat from Saudi Arabia attacked on his Twitter page to the followers of Prophet Household. This extremist Sunni scholar ignites violence and sectarian war among different Muslim sects, encouraging them to kill Shia Muslims. Brother of Sheikh Nimr and Nimr, Sheikh Taisir and Nimr, has mentioned that his brother is detained in an unknown detention facility by the Saudi government. He also said after the dismissal of the late Saudi king, the Saudi government and officials have become more aggressive towards his family and his detained brother. The family of Sheikh are very concerned about the Sheikh's safety, especially after they were denied to visit him. The brother of Sheikh Nimr, Sheikh Taisir, added, Sheikh Nimr further added, the death sentence issued by Saudi court is unjust and it can have very negative consequences on this new Saudi government. The death sentence issued by the government's court includes slaying of the Sheikh's head by sword. Iraq Tens of civilians were martyred and injured in successive bomb blasts. Two explosions hit a clothing market in the central Baghdad, killing 44 and wounding 70 Shia civilians. Motor shells also killed one civilian and wounded eight others in western Baghdad. ISIS terrorist groups also announced that it is arranging to demolish Shia praying sites in High Shifa district with bulldozers. Suicide bomber blew himself up at the Kadamiya district in northern Baghdad, killing 18 Shia civilians and injuring 38 others. A car bomb also exploded and killed 10 Shias and wounded 33 in the sad city east of the capital Baghdad, according to officials. In Mahmudiya district, in the southern Baghdad, another suicide attack killed 4 and wounded 10 Shia civilians. Motor shells hitting Shola city in northwestern Baghdad left 17 people killed and wounded, medical sources reported. A security source said two motor shells landed in Nahravan, east of the capital Baghdad, killing and wounding five Shia civilians. A bomb explosion followed by a car bomb parked in al Street, near the Department of Education in southeast of Baghdad, killed many civilians and left some property damage. According to sources, this blast resulted in 22 civilians martyred and 51 wounded. It is likely that the death toll will rise, as the conditions of some of the wounded are reportedly fatal. Security forces said that the rockets landed on districts of Bur and Ikrov in Baghdad, killing a woman and a child and wounding four others. The districts of Kariat, Shole and Taji have been the target of rockets, which resulted in the injury of dozens of civilians. <laughs> Islamic State militants ransacked Mosul's Central Museum, destroying priceless artifacts which are thousands of years old, carrying with the long history and culture of Iraq and the humanity. Adam, a human rights center in Iraq, in an announcement stated that all countries purchasing and trading Iraq's stolen artifacts from ISIS militants are responsible in this heinous crime. Let's watch this report. Iraqi treasure, historical sites, priceless antiquities and works of art are now under sledgehammers by the ISIS. The group simply named all these artifacts and idols and in its release footage smashed everything with drills and sledgehammers. Adam Global Center Defending Rights and Freedoms calls all countries smuggling the priceless Iraqi artifacts in their airports and borders as a crime partner of the ISIS terrorists. In its statement, the center states, Iraq's history and culture is now being stolen and destroyed in the eyes of the world and UNESCO. It is why the international mafias are now looting the history and cultural legacies of all Iraqis. It continues, These artifacts do not represent the history of Iraq alone, but they are memorials of great civilizations and all proud humans throughout the history. This statement also blamed the Turkish side for smuggling the Iraqi antiquities, saying, the main corridor through which the tourists are smuggling Iraqi antiquities is the Turkish border and the responsibility of returning them lies with this country. 
There was also the demand from the Turkish government to return all Iraqi artifacts that are traded or smuggled through its territory and to cooperate with the Iraqi Foreign Ministry and Interpol for tracking down the Iraqi state property. Iraqi Foreign Ministry's statement also demanded the Turkish government to deliver all the Iraqi capitals from all over the world and provide images and documents of the stolen artifacts. The days before, small ISIS gangs smashed some massive monuments in the city of Mosul Museum, while many of them are disappeared without a source or destination. According to experts, ISIS terrorists have sold more than 100 artifacts looted from Syria and Iraq, and this group has received considerable revenues through smuggling these artifacts to the United Kingdom. The funding that ISIS receives from selling these artifacts to European countries, according to some British newspaper, can appear as a major source for them. And now we are going to watch the most important news all around the world regarding Ayatollah Shirazi in the next part of our program, News in Brief. Rasul Adam Institution visited Ayatollah Shirazi's office in Holy Najaf. A number of administrators and staff of Rasul Adam Cultural Charity Institution in Karimiya attended in the office of the Grand Juries in Holy City of Najaf and met Ayatollah Sayyid Mazaza Shirazi. In this meeting, the staff of Ayatollah Shirazi's office was informed of activities and religious culture and charity programs of this institution. Ayatollah Sayyid Mazaza Shirazi, along with appreciating the activities and efforts of this institution for the sake of Ahul Bayt, peace be upon them, has emphasized on paying more attention to the Scotland's of the grand juries in the way of upbringing the young generation. Ayatollah Shirazi's office in Basra hosted different figures. Sheikh Jalal Maash, Ibrahim Maash, and Mustafa Maash, as the representatives of Ayatollah Shirazi attended in the office of the Grand Juries in Basra province and met Sheikh Nazar Hassan, the administrator of this office. In this meeting, the guidelines of Ayatollah Shirazi over religious and preaching programs, along with current religious and social issues of Shias, were discussed by the participants. Lady Fatima martyrdom commemorated in Kademiya. Following the guidelines of Ayatollah Shirazi upon upholding ceremonials in Fatimiya days, the central office of Rasulullah Adam Cultural Charity Institution in Kademiya held morning ceremonial in this regard. In the ceremonial, Sayyid Adan al Musavi gave a lecture and the participants recited poems in grief of Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her. It is noteworthy that Rasulullah Adam Cultural Charity Institution is dependent to the grand juries and is located in Iraq. Kedis Atul Awalim published by Ummah Bihan Institution. With the efforts of Ummah Bihan Cultural Institution and simultaneously with the Fatimiyah days, the book of Kedis Atul Awalim was published in the holy city of Karbala. This book, which is derived from the statements of Ayatollah Shirazi, speaks about the innocence of Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her, and usurping of her rights after the martyrdom of Holy Prophet Muhammad. Free media conference held in Iraq. An Naba Cultural Institution, the Panasana to Ayatollah Shirazi in Holy Karbala, held a conference entitled as Free Media for the purpose of reviewing the effects of media in Iraq. In this conference, which different media, political, social, cultural, and religious figures attended, the participants discussed about the influence of media on community and solutions for enhancing the quality of media activities. Representatives of Ayatollah Shirazi visited the Panasaras in Basra. A circle of representatives of the Grand Juries, including Sheikh Jalal Mustafa and Ibrahim Maash, visited the office of Ayatollah Shirazi in Basra province, along with the Panam religious centers, and discussed with the different figures over current religious issues of Shias. In these meetings, the representatives were informed of the latest activities of these centers and emphasized on expanding religious and preaching programs for the purpose of distributing the way marks of Abu Bayt, peace be upon them. In addition, the office of Ayatollah Shirazi in Basra hosts a Conversion ceremonials of Holy Prophet's daughter and Sheikh Ibrahim Maash delivered lecture in the ceremonial. It is noteworthy that the same ceremonial was held in the Azober district in the city with the participation of Ayatollah Shirazi's office members. Sheikh Muhammad Falak delivered lecture in the ceremonial. Ceremonials of Fatimiyah Days in Holy Karbala and Damascus Simultaneously with Fatimiyah Days and following the guidelines of Ayatollah Shirazi upon upholding Ahlul Bayt's waymarks and rituals, the offices of the Grand Juries in the Holy City of Karbala and Damascus held commemoration ceremonials of Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her. In the ceremonials which accompanied with the presence of scholars, clerics and lovers of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, the lecturers gave speeches over the great character of Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her, and the participants recited poems in affliction of 
the Holy Prophet's daughter. Sheikh Nasser al Hoyri and Ismail al Jaffa gave lectures respectively in the offices of Holy Karbala and Damascus. It is noteworthy that Azan Zahra Society, including the representatives of Ayatollah Shirazi and members of his office, along with a great number of Shias, attended in the morning procession in Holy Karbala and held recitation poems and chest beating ceremonials in the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Ceremonials of Fatimiyah Day's independence service to the Grand Jurist worldwide. Following the guidelines of Ayatollah Shirazi upon upholding Fatimiyah rituals, religious centers and Husseinians dependent to the Grand Jurist all over the world held morning ceremonials of Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her. In Holy Karbala, the office of Ayatollah Shirazi and its public relations office held three days of commemoration ceremonials of the Holy Prophet's daughter. In Australia, the followers of Ahlul Bay, peace be upon them, gather in the mosque and Husseini of Ali Yassin in Sydney and commemorate the martyrdom of Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her. In the ceremonial, Sheikh Muntazar Malullah delivered a lecture on the eulogists Abu Zahra Karbalai, Sayyid Siraj al Musavi, Mohanad al Banani, Abu Sadiq Salman, and Muhammad al Kufi recited poems and afflictions of Her Holiness among a great number of Shias. Also in Damascus, the female seminary school of Zainabiyah held morning ceremonials of Her Holiness in the discussion hall of this seminary school with the attendance of female clerics and others. Annaba Institution holds conference on protecting Iraqi artifacts. Annaba Center, a cultural institution in Holy Karbala, hosted numbers of prominent religious, social, and academic figures in its weekly conference, this time investigating ways to protect historical artifacts and religious sites. Sheikh Jalal Maash, a member of Ayatollah Shiraz's office in Holy Kong, Sheikh Mustafa Maash, a representative of the Grand Juries in Holy Karbala, Ahmad Juwait, head of Adam Human Rights Center, Dr. Allah Husseini, Haydar Jaber, and Dr. Ahmad Jassim, law professors at Karbala University, and Sheikh Sheikh Murtaza Maash, the manager of Annaba Institution, were among the attendants. The participants discussed religious, historical, financial, and international dimensions of these artifacts and emphasized on the role of relevant administrations. Free Muslim Organization Welcomes Kuwait Women's Summit Free Muslim Organization, a human rights center, dependent to Imam Shirazi World Foundation, expressed its goodwill for the Women's Summit in Kuwait. In its message, this organization called the summit a good opportunity for studying and solving the problems of Muslim women at this critical time. The center stated that, discussing the problems and the hardships of women in social and cultural domains is a top priority, especially after the impacts of extremism, political unrest, and civil wars on the Muslim community. Kuwait's Women's Summit hosts more than 600 female activists from different countries and human rights organizations. Seminar in the performance of Iraqi government since 2003. With the efforts of Al Mustakbar Strategic Study and Research Center, and with the Association of Members of Iraqi Parliament, a conference on the performance of Iraqi government in top executive levels since 2003 was held in the holy city of Karbala. In this seminar, the participants evaluated the performance and approaches of governors of Iraq during recent years to seek the solutions for the current necessities of this country. Also, the attendants discussed over picturing a strategic landscape for the future of Iraq and emphasized on political independence of this country. Dr. Khaled al Ardovi, Ghatan al Husseini, Jawad al Attar, Hassan Ashur, and Sheikh Murtaza Maash expressed their opinions over the title of conference. Publishing the book of Grand Jurists Upholders of Husseini Voice in Holy Karbala. With the efforts of cultural charity institution of Omaviha and with the aim of distributing Husseini rituals, the book of Grand Jurists Upholders of Husseini Voice was published in the holy city of Karbala. This book offered the statements of Ayatollah Shirazi and included different topics, as well as the decision of Allah Almighty for immortality of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, Grand Jurists and their protection for Husseini rituals, and Ashura, the school of reformation, in different chapters. This book is available in Arabic for scholars, university students, and other enthusiasts. Ayatollah Shirazi's office cooperating in Lady Zahra seminar. Simultaneously with Fatimiya Days and with the association of Ayatollah Shirazi's office in Holy Karbala, the conference of Lady Fatima Zahra's viewpoints was held in the building of engineering faculty in the city of Musayyab in Iraq. In this conference, with different university masters and students and researchers attended, Sheikh Talib al Salihi explicated over the reasons of Lady Fatima Zahra as a role model for women and the school of her thought as a protection for the rights of women in today's world. Oh, <laughs>
Following the daily meetings of the Grand Jurist Ayatollah Shirazi in recent days, a number of scholars, religious, cultural and social figures, along with different groups of youngsters and the public from all around the world, gathered at Ayatollah Shirazi's central office and gave ear to the words, guidelines and advices from the Grand Jurist.
That was all for this episode of the program Marjayat Horizon. For more information on our daily news about Marjayat, you can visit shirazi.ir and the official web pages of Rasul Akram Culture Institute on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as well. You can also watch the live stream on marjayatv.com. Thanks for being with us so far. May Allah preserve you. Bye for now.